Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. So I'm a big fan of these GameSir X2 telescopic controllers. In my opinion, these are some of the best controllers available on the market to turn your smartphone into an impromptu gaming device. Now I have a new one to show off to you, and this is the third one I've bought so far. The first one I bought used a USB-C port, which worked perfectly with Android games. And the second X2 that I bought was Bluetooth enabled. And while that controller worked on both Android and Apple phones, there was a discernible Bluetooth latency in my controller, so I wasn't a big fan of that one. Well today we have a different one to show off. This is the GameSir X2 Lightning. And I pre-ordered this one about a month ago and it just started shipping this past week. And as its name implies, it works with Lightning connectors, so any iPhone is going to work with this. And there's a couple perks with this style controller. First and foremost, you can actually use it with a case if you use a thin case. And secondly, at $70, this price point is very competitive, especially considering that the best one on the market right now costs $100. So in today's video, we're going to unbox this controller, take a look at how it performs, and then also see how it stacks up against the competition. So I'm hoping this is going to be a fairly quick video, and let's jump right into it. Okay, let's start with an unboxing. Now, as of making this video, the controller is not available on Amazon yet, so if you order it directly from the company like I did, it still kind of has that Chinese factory look to it. Consider it a special early adopter packaging. Now the box, as well as the case that this controller comes in, are exactly the same as the other two X2 models that I had previously purchased. And honestly, I don't really mind that. I appreciate the fact that they're using the same components instead of making new things. I also appreciate that the packaging doubles as a carrying case. Inside, you're going to find a small accessories box. And within here, you're going to find some thumbstick covers, stickers, a warranty, and an instruction manual. The instruction manual talks a little bit about how to set turbo buttons up. But other than that, not a lot of info. So here's a comparison here between the USB-C version as well as this new Lightning version. And they are cut from the exact same mold. As far as I could tell, the dimensions and the weight are exactly the same. The only thing really different is the connection type. And I don't think it's a bad thing. These controllers are really well built and they have a nice sturdy feel to them. So overall, I'm pretty stoked with this entire design. If it's not broke, why fix it? So let's take a look at some of these buttons. So as you can see, the D-pad doesn't have a lot of travel to it. It has a bit of a clicky texture to it. It reminds me a lot of a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con. The analog sticks are fine, they're a little bit lightweight, and they're very easy to maneuver around. They kind of remind me of a PS4's analog sticks. And they also click down so you have L3 and R3. Just like the D-pad, the face buttons are also clicky and not a lot of travel to them. Again, much like Joy-Cons. Now unfortunately, both the shoulder and the trigger buttons have that same kind of feel to them. They're very micro-switchy feeling, and unfortunately the triggers are not analog. And that could be an issue if you're playing something like a racing game. So let's do a quick comparison against its competitor, which is called the Backbone 1. Now I really love this controller, but it costs $100, so it's a solid $30 more than the GameSir. So my approach to these impressions are whether or not the improvements on the Backbone 1 are worth that $30 price difference. So let's start with the buttons themselves. They're a little bit clicky, but as you can see with the D-pad, it does have a good amount of travel to it. It has a more mushier feel. It feels really great. Same thing with these analog sticks. They also click down and they have a good feel to them. But yeah, these face buttons, they're just as clicky as they are in the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, as well as the game, sir. But the star of the show are these analog triggers. If you're playing any sort of game that requires finesse with the triggers, this is going to come in really handy. Another interesting aspect is that the shoulder and trigger buttons are relatively quiet, while the face buttons are actually much louder. What's interesting is that it's the opposite experience on the GameSir X2. The D-pad and the face buttons are relatively quiet, but these shoulder and trigger buttons are super clicky and loud. So if you're playing something like Call of Duty Mobile, that experience might get kind of annoying on this controller. But on the Backbone 1, it's a relatively silent experience. Okay, let's weigh these real quick. 168 grams for the GameSir X2, and for the Backbone 1, we're looking at 138 grams. So a bit of a weight difference, but it makes sense because the GameSir X2 has more plastic to it. So easily, the biggest drawback of the Backbone 1 is the fact that it doesn't work with cases. For example, here's the official Apple Slim case, and it doesn't fit into this controller at all. Unfortunately, the connector won't even connect. So you're going to have to take the phone out of its case anytime you want to play, which is a little bit disruptive. Meanwhile, on the GameSir X2, no issues at all, you can put it directly into the case. And obviously the type of case that you use may have an impact here, but it's nice to know that you can actually use a case at all. So let's check out some gameplay now. This is Oceanhorn 2 that looks and plays a lot like Breath of the Wild. And the gameplay is super smooth on this. There's no input delay, and I really like the sturdiness of this controller altogether. 
By the way, quick note here, I'm actually using the Blackview Android phone that I reviewed the other day for the camera on this part of the video, because typically I actually use my iPhone for these parts. And you know what? The video camera is not half bad. So yeah, overall, the feel of this controller is very sturdy. It provides a somewhat seamless experience where the phone just kind of blends into the controller itself. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's a lot of plastic surrounding the phone. It really does feel like you're just playing a Nintendo Switch Lite. I love the rounded grips on the back as well. It does make the entire experience a little bit more comfortable and ergonomic. So let's switch it out with the Backbone 1 to get a comparison of the feel of the controller altogether. And this is not going to be a good endorsement of the game, sir. But the moment I put this Backbone 1 into my hands, it was like night and day. I really love this Backbone 1 controller. The ergonomics on it are brilliant. It just feels cradled naturally in my hands. On top of that, I much prefer these analog sticks. They're a little bit more squat feeling, so they don't stick out as much, and they just feel more deliberate when you press down on them. Probably one of the biggest advantages of the Blackbone 1 is that it's a little bit rounded around the edges, and that it flares out near the bottom. This makes it cup naturally in your hands and feels really, really good. And when you do a direct comparison between the Game Sir and the Backbone 1, all of a sudden these back grips don't feel as ergonomic. I think if I didn't have the Backbone 1 at all, I'd be perfectly happy with how the Game Sir X2 feels. But I'm telling you, the moment you put the Backbone 1 in your hands, you're like, oh, this is how it could be. Not to mention those analog triggers, which are a big sell for me as well, especially on a game like Ocean Horn, where how far you push down the analog controller does make a difference. That being said, it is a bit of an inconvenience to have to take your case on and off anytime you want to play it. And to be truthful here, I don't use my Backbone 1 as much as I probably would if I didn't have to take the case off all the time. And so that's a big selling point for the GameSir X2 for me. The added convenience of just taking the phone that's already in your hands, already in its case, and just plopping it right into this controller is super convenient. And I've got no complaints about how this controller performs. It's a solid 9 out of 10. And really, when it comes down to it, it's unfortunate from a competition perspective that the Backbone 1 is a 10 out of 10. Regardless, I had a lot of fun using the GameSir X2. Every game that I threw at it played naturally and all the buttons were correctly mapped. And even something like game streaming with PS4 Remote Play worked seamlessly. I didn't have to do any adjustments to the controls in any way. And I already mentioned it in my iPhone game streaming video a couple months ago, but streaming PS4 on an iPhone is a wonderful experience. And having a telescopic controller like the GameSir X2 really does enhance that experience. So bottom line here, is this controller, the GameSir X2 Lightning, worth $70? And I would say that it absolutely is worth it, provided that you do all the other things that allow you to unlock the gaming potential of an iPhone. So one, I would recommend maybe investing in Apple Arcade to get some really high quality games. Or check out my alt store video where I show you how to run emulators on the iPhone. This is going to allow you to play things like PSP games or RetroArch, which allows you to support up to PS1 and Nintendo 64 if you play your cards right and download the correct version of RetroArch, which I have listed in that video. Regardless, once you've kind of unlocked the iPhone's potential as a gaming machine, this GameSir X2 is a perfect complement to that experience. Now don't get me wrong, the Backbone 1 is definitely a superior controller, but it does cost an additional $30 and you do have to take your case off every time. If neither of these things bother you, for example, you don't mind paying extra for a premium experience, and you don't mind taking off your case, then I would say get the Backbone 1. But if you use a thin style case and you don't want to have to take it off, and you want to save a little bit of cash, I think the GameSir X2 is completely functional. The lack of analog triggers to me is not a total deal breaker, but it's going to really depend on whether or not you do things like streaming PS4, where having analog triggers is already baked into that console. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. Just short and sweet. Wanted to talk a little bit about this controller and compare it against the best one on the market today. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming.